19 years ago, plus a few months, Blizzard released a game that would become a cultural touchstone. A game that clearly divides history. The history of the art genre, the history of esports, the history of video games as existing before it and after it. Because after it, nothing was the same. StarCraft is, without a doubt, one of the most well-covered video games in history. You know everything about it already. Ready. This is without a doubt the most superfluous show ever made. Blizzard itself has made documentaries about its development, about its creation, about how it changed the world. And especially how it changed one particular country, South Korea. Thusly, as a gaming history episode, this probably will not even scratch the surface of what StarCraft is. I know it won't. It can't. StarCraft is a phenomenon that is beyond me. It is beyond you. It is beyond most of us. It is a game that has destroyed its genre. After StarCraft, there was no more RTS. People tried to make RTS games after StarCraft, they did not succeed. They made StarCraft. They tried to make more of StarCraft, they didn't have a chance. And anybody who wasn't doing StarCraft was compared to it and failed. Even those who would believe they could improve upon its ideas still failed, because there is no improvement upon StarCraft. Mostly because StarCraft, some would say, is not an RTS. It is StarCraft. That is a game where every individual quirk of the mechanics, every little bug of the AI pathing, every tiny pixel clicking, animation stopping, move, any sort of little tiny insignificant to everyone else, every detail, is a strategy unto itself. But that's not how it started. Of course it's not. That's not how this game could have started. That's not how any game could have started. StarCraft was Blizzard's attempt to make Warcraft in space. They did Warcraft 2, it was successful, they got tired of doing fantasy stuff, they had Diablo on the production table from Condor, which became Blizzard North and said, hey, you know what? L let's do something else. Let's do something with space aliens and creepy crawlies and sci-fi things and robots and probably a lot of stuff we can borrow in big quotation marks from the Warhammer 40k universe like we did with StarCraft and their Warhammer standard universe. Only then we had a sort of an excuse because we actually tried to get the license for it but didn't manage to, so now we're just doing it out of spite or something, I don't know. The point is that they made, in 1995, a horrible game. They showed it at E3 in 96, everybody thought it was a joke, and Blizzard soon realized that, well, this isn't gonna work. This absolutely will not work. And lo and behold, that's when the Blizzard we know was born. You can thank StarCraft for Blizzard being Blizzard. Most of all, you can thank the people that told them that, oh my god, your game looks like crap, at E3 96. Had that not happened, we would have had a StarCraft that was basically just a Warcraft 2 reskin and didn't really have much of what StarCraft is to it. That's when they decided to put into effect a couple of ideas. Ideas like, let's not show anybody a game unless we have something to really wow them with. Get it? Wow them because they made StarCraft? They would not show a game until it was well into development, until it was something that could be considered close to the final version. Well, at least that was the idea back then, because we all know that Blizzard started showing Diablo 3 when it seemed like a good game. But that wasn't the only idea that they implemented with StarCraft. They also had the idea of epic scope. That means something that can be played and replayed again and again and again because there are multitudes to it. There is multiple things to do in it. There is multiple ways to play. There is multiple ways to enjoy it. There are multiple ways in which you will become a master at it. This is something that could be really said about Warcraft 1 and 2 because both factions were kind of the same. They, they had very, very few differences, mostly in terms of little statistics, uh, with I believe the trolls having less health but more range than the art. No, that was the grunts. Or something like that. There were very, very mild differences. StarCraft was different. Very different. They took the concept of asymmetry to its maximum potential, with each unit being completely different to the other one, to its counterpart, I mean, in the um, other factions. A Terran Space Marine would 
would not be the same as a Zerg Zergling or as a Prora Zealot. They would be completely different units. One of them would be completely, utterly, devastatingly more powerful than the other. One of them would have range. One of them would have the ability to be spawned in so many numbers it would just flood the other ones. So 1v1 between two of these units, that was not the game. You wouldn't just slam them into each other in equal numbers and the one with the most upgrades won, like you would in Warcraft 1 and 2. No, no, no. This was a strategy game that involved all the units. You had to build counters. Oh, you're being attacked by circles, pop down a couple of mines, they blow up very nice and take out packs of them. You're being attacked by a bunch of zealots, flood them with zerglings because they're cheap as hell, quick to produce, and eventually they will kill them all. Does the enemy have a lot of ground units? Flood them with carriers and kill everything in sight. For a layman, for uh, someone who hasn't seen competitive StarCraft, a control of carriers is actually probably the, the end game. That's what it was when I was growing up and seeing people play and playing with them in multiplayer. Or building mass nukes and winning with them somehow. Pay no mind to the cheating on the background. And multiplayer itself was another one of the ideas that Blizzard really wanted to put on the forefront of this game. They did it through Battle.net, a brand new system that was initially hosted on a, I think it was a Pentium 1, or maybe a 486. It was just one computer resting on a chair in their office and it initially just hosted Diablo 1, well hosted. It handled the connections between players trying to connect to one another. But it then evolved into a more complicated system with its own website with StarCraft at its forefront. It enabled people to play online with ladders, with tournaments, with maps you could download and get and will do many many great things. It served as a community hub. It served as the beginning of something great. StarCraft would also be the game that pushed Blizzard into the forefront of storytelling. They made their own internal division that handled cinematics, they put a lot of effort into writing a story with characters, with a mythos that isn't just Warcraft's vanilla ripoff of Warhammer and Tolkien, it's, it's, it's a ripoff of Aliens and Warhammer and Dune, but it's theirs. Blizzard did not want to make games based on someone else's property because then they're, they're chained down, but in their own property they can do basically everything. They can have a certain important character be killed off by some flunky, not even in a heroic way, and just swept off to the side and forgotten about. That, that's not a StarCraft thing by the way, that's something else. They had complete control and with StarCraft that just materialized into a very good game. With a great story, good characters, memorable moments and plenty of action, replayability and later an expansion that added several layers to the story, added more characters, more intrigue, left people wondering for 12 years what exactly is going on because we sort of lost thing like do we need to buy books? Oh you're selling books now, okay cool, yeah we're gonna have to buy the books to learn stuff aren't we, yeah you just don't care anymore, okay it's okay we'll buy the books, you'll like it. And then came the unexpected. If you're playing Starcraft in multiplayer now as a layman, as a normal human being, you're not playing Starcraft in multiplayer. Heck, you're not playing it in single player either. You're playing what you believe to be an RTS. You're playing it like you would play Brawler 2. You're playing it like you would play Warcraft 2 even. The essence of Starcraft was revealed only after the game was released in South Korea and it became part of the esports scene. In South Korea this was not just seen as some video game. This was seen as a possible replacement for venerable games enjoyed by everyone and given very very much importance and respect like Go. And it was treated as such. It was treated like an absolute strategy tactics game in which every bit of it is important. In which every tiny and significant detail of the game is part of the game. This goes back to what I was saying about interrupting animations, about managing the way that pathing works. It's mastering things about the game that you would not consider because they are only things that exist in StarCraft. These elements were not even considered by the people at Blizzard until they had actually seen them being played out on stage, on a massive stage with thousands of people watching in an esports tournament in South Korea. Only then did they actually understand what they had made. And from then on, StarCraft, Brood War went on to become, and still is, 
the most successful RTS ever made. Some would say the greatest one ever made. You'll even find some assholes, especially in uh, esports communities like the one in Romania, who will pretty much go nuclear if you try to explain to them that there are other strategy games and that manipulating a dragoon to blow up individual spider mines as they're coming at you doesn't mean that it's the best strategy game ever made, it means that it is StarCraft. Because when you get right down to it, every game has incredibly absurd secure quirks that can completely change how it is played at a very very high level. But no one cares to actually find those for something other than StarCraft because StarCraft took off. StarCraft was good and I mean properly good at a time when well RTS games were experimenting and trying to find new ways to develop the formula. For example you had games like War Inc where you could build your own custom units and play the stock market to defeat your opponents by buying them out, some of them. StarCraft just went for the combat aspect, it just went for the core base building combat with very very good asymmetrical units that just had a charm to them, all placed within a universe, a framework, a story that had super potential, had atmosphere, had mood. And it made it big, again so big that it blew up the entire genre. It wasn't RTS anymore, it was StarCraft. And some games did continue on their own, Command and Conquer continued to be Command and Conquer up to a point where it, when it became uh, League of Legends for reasons that are related to the fact that League of Legends uh, destroyed the MOBA genre. Well technically Dota did and League of Legends continued and then Dota again but you get the idea. Success is not a double-edged sword. It's a really pointy stick. One that can easily burst the bubble of the genre from which the stick comes from, leaving everybody dazed and confused. Blizzard had incredible devotion to StarCraft, to its community, to the point where it only took them 12 years to make a sequel, which being Blizzard, yeah, that's actually not a lot, considering that they made the game after they put in their we won't show game until it's good philosophy. Mind you, it took them longer what Diablo 3 to actually release it and there is no Warcraft 4 yet. And now Blizzard has released a remastered version of StarCraft. The original is free, well it's not the original, it's still, it's still the remastered version of StarCraft that's free, but it's the version without the new graphics, without the new content, new cinematics, new well, everything. That version is free. You can play it now, you can see it on the background, I sort of suck at it, haven't played it in a long time. I was playing it always like an RTS, like I would play Command and Conquer, not like StarCraft, because again StarCraft is its own genre for the most part. But if you pay about 15 bucks you can get the version with 4K graphics, with enhanced sound, with enhanced... Well, not enhanced controls, again, they did not touch the gameplay at all. Because if they did, it would not be StarCraft anymore. It would be some clone, some reboot, some cheap imitation. It would not be the same game. It would be like changing the rules to chess where now the pawns can go backwards because it would be easier. Make no mistake, StarCraft is not a perfect game. It's got major flaws and its mechanics and the way it behaves, but it's those quirks, those things, those small tiny elements, those imperfections that have made it the most endearing, most long-lasting RTS game ever. Without those it would be just boring, stale, kinda lame, at least in the minds of those who see it as something more than just the story of Sarah Kerrigan, Jim Rayner and Zeratul. The story of the ancient Excel Naga, a race that shaped the universe, the story of an overmind that sort of got the same backstory and intentions like Jessica from Dune, which I don't understand why they would put that in there, but sure, okay, I get it now, yeah, it makes sense, sort of, and there's the hybrid, and there, like I said, the story got a couple of degrees of complications later on. So go play StarCraft Remastered, the version that doesn't actually have the graphics because it's free, buy the new one if you wanna, and go play StarCraft 2, at least the Star Edition, because it's free as well, the, the first couple of levels are free, and the game itself isn't all that expensive, but you are gonna have to pay three times for it because they kind of split it up into three games because they're Blizzard, they, they can do that. Goodbye.